dog, O oh, viper vile, the solace in thy most marvellous face, the solace in thy teeth and in thy throat, the solace in thy lungs and in thy hateful stomach, yea, the solace in thy nasty mouth, I do retort, the solace in thy mouth, the pistols come to that, and flashing fire will follow. I am not Barbison. You cannot conjure me. I have an illness to knock you in different ways. You grow foul with me, pistol. I'm scaring you with my right gun. Oh, braggart vile. Damn furious white. The grave doth gain. And go to death is near. Therefore, exhale! I want of you a betting. Base is the slave that pays. That no one will have, that's the humour of it. As man who shall compound, push out. Whatever you come of women, come in quickly to St. John. Oh, poor heart, he is so shaped of a burning quantity of tertian that it is most lamentable to behold. Sweet men, come to him. The king hath run bad humours on the night, be that as it may. The king is a good king, but he passes some humours and careers. Alas! Alack! John Falstaff is, is dead! dead. Alas! Alack! There was no need for him to trouble himself with such thoughts yet. I bade me lay more clothes upon his feet. I put my hand into the bed and felt them, and they were as cold as any stone. So then I fell to his knees, and they were as cold as any stone. And upwards, and upwards, and all was as cold as any stone. <laughs> Thus, with imagined wing, our swift scene flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Suppose that you have seen the well-appointed king on Hampton Pier embark his royalty and his brave fleet, the young <clears throat> with silken streamers, the young Phoebus fanning. Play with your fancies, and in them behold, upon the hempen tackle, ship boys climbing. Hear the shrill whistle that the horn it gives to sounds confusing. And behold the threaded sails, borne by the invisible and creeping wind, draw the huge bottoms through the furrowed sea, breasting the lofty surge. Oh, do but think you stand upon the ravage, and behold a city on the inconstant billows dancing. 
And so appears this fleet majestic, holding due the course for half blood. One more time. You arrive at your destination, bloody from battle, still seasick from the trip across the sea. But your king asks you into battle one more time. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. Or close up the walls with our English dead. In peace, nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard favoured rage. Then lend them to the eye a terrible aspect. Let it cry through the portage of the head like the brass cannon. Let the brow overwhelm it as fearfully as the forgotten rock or hang and jutty its compounded face, swilled by the wild and wasteful ocean. Then set the teeth, stretch the nostrils wide, hold hard the breath, and bend up every spirit to their full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is fed from fathers of war proof. Fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn to even fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Dishonor not thy mothers. Show that those whom you call fathers did beget you. Be copy now to men of gross of blood and teach them how to <laughs> And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not. For there is none of it so mean and base as hath not noble lustre in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds at the slip. Waiting for the start. The game's afoot. Follow your spirits. And upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England and St. George! God for Harry, England and St. George! The knocks are too hot. For my own part, I have not a case of knives. The humour of it is too hot. That's a very plain song. The plain song is most just. Humours do abound. Knocks go and come. God's vassals drop and die. And shield and shield in bloody field shall win immortal fame. <laughs> Would I were in an ale house in London, I would give all my faith a pot of ale and safety. And I, if wishes would prevail with me, my purpose should not fail with me. But there would I hide. <laughs> as duly, but not as truly, as the bird do sing or bow, now fly, birds fly. As young as I am, I have observed these three sorties. I am born to them all three, but all they three, though they would serve me, could not be man to me. For indeed, three such do not amount to a man. He is white-livered and red-faced. Bind him into a wolf and faces it out. For Bristol, he, he hath a killing tongue and a quiet sword, by the means well for great words, and keeps all weapons. For him, he hath heard that men a few words, 
are the best kind of men, and therefore he scorns to say his prayers. Leicester should be thought a coward. But his few bad words, matched with his few good deeds, for I never broke any man's head but his own. And that was against the post when he was drunk. They will steal anything and call it a purchase. Barov sold a loot case, bought 12 leagues, and sold it for three half pennies. Nimmin Barov has sworn brothers in Filching and in Calais and sold fire coal. I knew for that piece of service, yeah. the men would carry coals. They would have me. Yeah, the familiar with the men's pockets. As they had gloves, all their handkerchiefs, which puts much against my manhood. If I should take from another man, my own. Fritz are playing. Pocketing. Apple locks. They lost that. I must leave them. Six of them. Three of them. Never the goes against my weak stomach. But therefore, I must cast it off. Thank you for watching.